Hello, and welcome back to Miss Clicks Presents Rat Queens D&D. This is the second part of our second episode, and we have just been discovered, as in uh, D has just been discovered, putting Betty back in her backpack in the sheriff's office. Uh, the sheriff who thought that he was uh, about to have a hot date and found he had been tricked. <laughs> Let's see what happens next. Well, so far what he's found is that his his place was getting robbed by a hairy half man weenie. Yes. Um, yeah. Uh, I think I I look at the smidgen and I look back at at um, at Sheriff Anwan and I say, "You, you're not with the half man weenies. Who are you? What are you doing here? Speak now, or we'll gut you like a fish." <laughs> And this is like you're looking at me when you're saying this. Like, <laughs> yeah, and I'm like. <sighs> well, I guess I've broken my cover. You see, I've been investigating the half Mandinis now for several weeks. And just several so weeks? My investigation has brought me right here to this year office. And I was able to witness this half Mandini. What a horrible, horrible representation of a smidgen this person is and it led me right to this place so you're some sort of smidgen like, name clearer are you <laughs> uh no not really but i do investigate serious crimes including the theft of certain gold things that cannot be picked up unless certain words are muttered oh my that sounds dramatic very specific too <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anybody could know about that unless they had been researching this for a long time. <laughs> well, now that you have let my suspect get away, I guess I'll be on my way. I have more important things to do than to sit here and argue with you folks when there's a person out there who's looking for this gold statue that has been stolen by the half Mandinis. Okay, I'm out of here. <laughs> well, I just feel like, terrible about interrupting your investigation. I'll help you look. <laughs> Make a persuasion check. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> I'll, I'll give you advantage. Uh, which one of us? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 22 for Betty. So convincing. Uh, all right, D, you got the same, but you got you get advantage. Oh. 16. All right. Let's see. Not bad. He nods. He leans into Betty. You know, I've... Uh, heard that there's uh operations like that happening around here if you're ever looking for good men you know i'm looking to maybe move on from this town and as d will attest i have quite the history behind me and one has slain many bandits do you have a resume <laughs> it's not current but i can get one made up for you if if necessary well, don't let me interrupt you any further. Uh, besides, uh, this lovely young lady and I have uh, some drinks waiting for us at the tavern. Uh, Constable, if you want, you could come and join us. Talking to D or talking to me? He's calling Betty a constable. Oh, he's talking to, oh. <laughs> what did I just tell you? We have an important mission to take care of. I have Very well, no Very well. I'm sorry, I'm, I understand. <laughs> Gods, gods be with you, good citizen. I think I bolt. <laughs> <laughs> I just as fast as I can. All right, so he turns to D. Well, shall we? And he holds out an arm. Yeah, I, I, I pick the backpack up much lighter now. I yeah. sling it over my shoulder. I look at the wreck of his desk. I say, shame. I was hoping to be the one to break that desk. Let's head back. <laughs> Uh, I'm still confused as to whether D actually finds this guy attractive or is just like really trying to seal the deal. I don't he's know. He's super cute, so like, why not, you know, get both at the same time? There's no problem with this. I mean, you do you, D. Exactly. <laughs> All right, so uh, he goes and he locks the door behind him to his office. He actually goes and shuts the window, and uh, he does mutter like to the to the. He has to set up his his desk again. Uh, he turns it over and grabs the statue that's at the door, or at kind of the base of the window, and he looks down and he says, good luck picking that up. And he picks up the statue and affixes it to the desk and you hear a magical whoosh again as it sticks to the desk. And he looks like, oh, somebody ripped my papers. That's what I put a paperweight here for. <laughs> Rips it off with a magical word, puts it back down again, and then he joins you uh, back at the tavern. 
with the rest, with, with Hannah and Violet and the two guardsmen who, the two guardsmen have already had quite a few drinks in the time that you guys have been gone. Uh, they're feeling pretty breezy right now. Where yeah. do, where do you go, Betty? Um, I I actually probably go to just see if I can find out where the half Mandinis went. Mm-hmm. All right, so um, why don't you make an investigate check as you leave the uh, the sheriff's office? Okay. Only twelve. Well. So you go around to where you, the bottom of the window where you you, know, you saw him uh, get blasted out. And uh, you can see uh, kind of a long mark, a, a smidgen sized skid mark along the ground where he slid along the ground for a while before coming to a stop. And it looks like him and the rest of his crew bolted northward out of town, following kind of the alleys behind some of these thatched, roo- these thatched huts um, with pretty good speed, it looks like. Yeah, they wouldn't be too far away though. Um. Well, since since I only have eight hit points, I probably shouldn't like go after them by myself. So I would assume that everyone else is back at the tavern, and that yeah. now that I've at least have a rapport, I could show up there and not have to worry about anything. Yeah. Okay. I'll go back. I'm gonna go back and and maybe uh you know at least let Dehan and Violet know. Like. <laughs> Sorry. Half Mindy's left. <laughs> oh, that's you okay. Out there for a second. <laughs> yeah, sorry, my internet just went away. Uh, okay, well, your character, you. your character died while you were away, so. Okay. <laughs> sorry about that. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, so I'm going back to the tavern to tell them uh, that I think the Half Mindy's uh, escaped north. Okay. All right, so you meet up with everyone else. Uh, you... Betty comes in a little bit later. Uh, Violet and Hannah, you've been hanging out with these these two young guards. They they've been buying you drinks and the voucher you guys used to turn in for a free meal. Um, did know, we yep. save the free meals for for the other two, or did we eat them? I don't know, Hannah. What did you do? Um, I I think we uh, saved them. I mean, I think so- we like heftily discussed how like the ethics of potentially eating the meals but ended up <laughs> leaving it for them uh are oh, either of the two guards cute <laughs> let's see here i'll roll their i'll roll their uh roll for their, hotness roll for, roll for hotness, roll for hotness. it's a miss clicks classic uh, they actually i just rolled the d20 and if it would have been a one they would have had a one charisma but they actually have a 15 out of 14 charisma hmm. whoa so Better they are super hot yeah mm-hmm. this is one of them or both of them the, are they uh, twins? Yeah, yes, they are. One's just a little bit better looking than the other, actually. I, I am totally trying to go for the better looking one. I'm and fine I'm, with that. I'm like super, I've had quite a few drinks. I'm really worried about Betty. But I'm tr- I'm trying to tell him about my uh, sword. Okay. And I'm like kind of picking some like ogre vomit out of the like designer label on it. You know, it has like this yeah. designer seal. I'm kind of like picking it out. And I'm like, and you know... It's you can tell it's authentic because it has, you know, and I hold it in front of his head and I'm like, see, because, you know, it's better. He he leads forward. Yeah, I can. I can. I've never thought about that before. That's you are so interesting. You are you're so deep. (laughs) Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. You are, too. And I just like I'm just like really close to his face. I'm just like (laughs) looking deep into his eyes like we should like. We sh- wait. Where's my friends? Hold on. And they, and they walk in at that moment. D returns. <clears throat> Betty seems to just pop in out of nowhere. As I've been watching this, I'm kind of like this other guy is really hot, but I'm worried about my friends. So I'm kind of like I'm flirting with him, but I'm also very worried. So I'm I'm completely relieved to see them walk in, and I'm like, hold please to the hot guard all right nice <laughs> to make sure they're okay we got what we needed her flotation is way less sloppy than mine <laughs> uh i i immediately stride to the table where they are and i say oh so many drinks i think we'd better go to the bathroom quick this way oh i to- totes have to pee too <laughs> just second boop <laughs> i just grab i grab vi and i just kind of drag her to the toward the bathroom yeah, you and don't once we're go back there, anywhere. <laughs> Dee is like very soberly and very excitedly trying to be like, listen, we don't know Betty, 
Betty is some sort of other investigator. She got caught, but Harry Halfaweeny was there already trying to steal the gold statue, and Betty, like, didn't get it. And now uh, Anwan thinks that Betty is an investigator, and Half Man Weenie is still out there on the hunt. Where's the and statue? we don't have the statue yet. Oh, gods. <laughs> we have to go back and get it. Do we still I need it? In the bathroom, though, right? What's that? I I so I was at the tavern, so I saw them yeah, all go to the bathroom. Did, so like yeah. maybe maybe I will then after you know I've counted to sixty in my head, then I will get up uh, and also go in there too, so I can join in on the conversation. Did right. Nandini lie to us then? Why was <coughs> he there? We were supposed to get the statue and bring it back to him. I don't know. I couldn't make sense of it. It was oh Betty. <laughs> <gasps> Betty, yeah. I squeeze her. I pick her up in a little door. hug. Mandini are frauds and and like just like spill everything like you have to say this to pick up the statue they did this they know they went north blah 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 they're a bunch of dickheads I bet they kick puppies too like this is all very much a surprise well at least Anwan is an upstanding individual oh and Anwan I got a few things to say about your boyfriend too no <laughs> <laughs> I found this in his office when I was looking for the gold statue that was right on top of his desk. Is that a diary? Let's all read it. <laughs> <laughs> we all huddle around it, yeah, like exactly. the book in Mean Girls. <laughs> yeah, totally. All right, so we come out of the bathroom. We know everything. Can't we just, for once, get the thing we came for, have sex with the hot guards, and then leave? Like, can't we just, for once, look, he's still pretty. <laughs> I'm pissed off that everyone has been lying to us and we tried to actually do something somewhat upstanding. I know. We could have killed them all right then and there. We no, should have killed them all. It. It's okay because it's the time when good seems no fun, that fun is actually the good. We did the good. We should do the good. All right, Violet. Anyway, we. <laughs> the real point here is. <laughs> so, is that statue worth anything to us at this point? Or do we even trust that Larry motherfucker to pay us if we do get it? It's I don't think the statue is worth anything, but I think. Him, it Larry... must be worth something if he wants it so badly. Maybe we should just take it and see what we can get for it elsewhere. I think Larry is worth something. If, if, if you have um, proficiency with history, you can actually make a roll after Ooh. Betty after Betty described what happened with the statue. Okay. But only I'm proficient. proficient. Okay. I'm proficient have, with history. I have a six history. Right. Yeah, I've only got a four, so I'll let you do yeah. it. I'll we'll roll that and see if I know anything. Do oh, I have any good rolls? No, not really. <laughs> oh, damn. <laughs> never. Never going to get a good roll. Do I know anything? Um, it sounds, got a ten. it sounds familiar. Do you can also roll it as well. Okay. Yeah. yeah anyone that has I got a 16. <laughs> I got a 16. Uh, okay. So Hannah, you, you've heard of this, of something similar to it. You know, I mean, obviously the magical properties make sense to you. It has some kind of adhesion spe uh, magic that's, that's, um, been placed on it. Uh, but D after the, Thinking about it and even seeing how it worked, you you were there when it dropped on the ground. Um, you actually remember, you've read about this. This is a, a bit of an artifact. It might be worth a little bit of money. It's called the Gold Statue of Impossible Gravity. Ah, oh, the Gold Statue of Impossible Gravity, of course. <laughs> Good luck picking that up. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, you know that it's once it's been affixed to a surface, it cannot be removed unless the magical incantation of good luck picking that up and it has to it has to be said exactly like that or else it'll <laughs> never be able to pick it up um uh, yeah i mean this is it's a it's an artifact that's kind of been lost to time and it's been sitting on this guy's that's such a trolley time. artifact <laughs> d as probably crazy but as the team battle strategist i've got to ask what if you just ask the sheriff guy to give you the statue. And if he didn't give it to you, then we just, like, forced him. Um, I could probably arrange something. 
where is this half man Dini motherfucker? Why yeah, also we should kill that guy. Get paid for him and then take the statue and get the fuck out. They went north. I think. <laughs> <laughs> we should totes chase those guys. We go north. We catch the half weenies. We bring them back. We turn them in. We get laid. We get the statue as a reward. Boop. <laughs> I agree with Vi. Boop. All right. So what do you guys do? Are you guys all at the bathroom at this point? Or are you? Yeah, scared? we gotta drive to grab Vi and then say let's let's go. Uh, Wait. For... Before we go, I go. What's my guard's name? Uh, his name is. I gotta pick a random letter. Give me a second. His name is Marshall. I go up to Marshall <laughs> and I pet his face and pet the other side. It's kind of like a little too hard, like kind of slappy, but I'm like, <laughs> Marshall. Marshy Marsh. While she's doing it, I grab her and I point at the other one and I'm like, we've got some business boys, but we'll be back soon. Don't forget me. Take her out. I'll be <laughs> back. I'll be back. <laughs> All right. <laughs> he watches you go. You can see the pain in his eyes as he's suffering. <laughs> um, and you guys head out of the unicorn circle uh, into the, the town square. All right. Cool. Let's go. I'm like settling all my weapons. I'm like checking all my hilts and stuff. I'm like, let's smash stuff. All right. So I probably take him to like where I had tracked him, and okay. and we go from there. All right. So you find the. The very, it's not, I mean, it's not super easy to find. You managed to find it uh, decently well. But you got to make some survival checks to follow these tracks to see where they go out of town. Uh, what time is it? It's <laughs> around, it's about mid afternoon right now. Okay, cool. I was I'm like, is it like drunk. midnight or something? <laughs> no, no, you guys yeah. got to town just after, after, you know, kind of lunchtime, and now it's a little bit in the afternoon. Cool. Yep, all right. Um, so, yeah, make some survival checks. <laughs> <laughs> never, never gonna get a good roll. Do we all make survivals? Yeah, Isn't yeah. that south? Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> you guys, we drink way I'm too really much. Drunk. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Hannah and Violet are both really drunk. We're pretty drunk. I'm trying to be serious about this, but I'm drunk. Chat, <laughs> Hannah rolled a three and Violet rolled a one. They can see it. And Betty saved the day with a 19. Okay. Oh, can yeah. they see it now? Oh, yay. <laughs> oh, wait. <laughs> You guys finally find the track, and you go. No the town is small. You're out of the outskirts of town within like two minutes, and uh, you can see that they just all uh, kept on going north. In fact, you guys can all make a perception check. With pleasure. Oops, not persuasion. Perception. I'm not drunk. Violet's drunk. <laughs> Ooh. All right, Dee and Hannah, you both see. About 500 feet. It looks like they're sitting around uh, just at the edge of a wheat field. Uh, and it looks like they're gearing up. They're putting, like, um, like black marks on their face. And they're getting, like, they're putting on dark clothes. It's the middle of the afternoon. Um, but they're sitting around in a circle getting ready uh, for something. Mm. Okay. How, uh, how far away are they? Did they're about say? 300 feet. 300 feet, okay. Hmm. So the goal is capture, right? Just one, really. I mean, we could try and capture all of them, but I think Larry is the most valuable oh, one. Yeah. Right, yep. So we could kill the rest of them. Um, who among us is good at like ranged attacks? Uh, I have, I have magic missile, and I have ray of sickness and burning hands. Um, oh, you should make them all pure. Fireball, so I can make them all sick, <laughs> and then we can attack them. That sounds good. Okay. Okay. Um, so, if you're gonna use ray of sickness, to, then yeah. I lay I lay a hand on your shoulder and I speak a brief incantation to Nyargoth, Nyagaroth, Nyagaroth. <laughs> <laughs> it's not important. <laughs> and and you uh, you feel your 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 aim being guided by a divine power. Nice. Um, so you get to roll one d four and add it to your attack roll. To, so you're more accurate. What's the range on a ray of sickness? That's what I was just gonna check. Cool. Oh, good. A three. Um, it should be there if you um, if you just like click on the no, spell. I, I should say. Press it. Yeah. Sixty. 
Oh shit, we gotta get closer. Yeah. Does anybody have a bow? I'm all melee myself. I mean, I have, um, I think my other, oh no, not even close. I, I think I Betty has. Yeah. I think Betty has one. She I did could be at least 100 feet. Oh she my gosh, I did. Oh, you're right. I <laughs> totally have a short bow. Yes. Yeah, so your max range on the short bow is 320. Um, if you're shooting further than 80 feet, you're at disadvantage, but I can give you that uh, guidance as well. So you'll get a plus, plus 1d4. That would give us a big surprise drop. So actually, if, you, if we're attacking from surprise, we have advantage, which cancels out the disadvantage, which means you just get the plus four, or plus one d4. So I get to shoot? Drop an arrow on top of half a weenie. OK. <laughs> All, All right. right. I, I cast guidance on you, Betty. Oh, damn. Ugh. <laughs> All right, so Betty knocks an arrow and fires, and it lands a good 40, 40 feet behind them. That's actually an 11, not a 4. Wait, oh. 7. Uh, still misses, but uh, <laughs> you, you see someone stand up immediately and turn around. Uh, they heard the, the whip of the arrow, and it kind of thunk into the ground behind them. And Larry, it's, it's Larry, he stands up, hey! <laughs> Traitors! <laughs> Don't do that again! Uh, I shot back, liars! <laughs> Stupids! Yeah, come over here and say that! Ah, I run in. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, totally. Awesome. Her. All right, so as soon as Violet charges, um, it looks like Larry wasn't expecting that, and his eyes go wide, and they all turn and start to run into the wheat. No, <laughs> come back, let me smash you! Uh, okay. So we're running towards them and they run into the... Yeah, so you guys are kind of chasing them uh, at this point, but what actions do you want to take? As they haven't got to the wheat yet, they're just turning to run. Oh, uh, yeah. So how far away are we at this point when we're running towards them? Uh, but you're still a good 300 feet out. Okay. Uh... Oof. I don't think we'll catch them before they get to the wheat. No, but if I can run uh, close enough to the wheat, I can set it all on fire, so... <laughs> Oh. Let's get over there. What happened to making them sick? I'm not close enough. Oh, and if yeah. they run into the wheat field, then I need to get them all <laughs> at the same time. <laughs> all right, so uh, what do you do? Oh, wow, I have two second level spells. Ha ha. Uh, let's see. I'll follow the actions of wh whatever. Yeah, I mean, I think I'm just running toward them as fast as I possibly can, so okay. I can get within range to attack. Okay. So. Um, I'm worried about Betty's health. You know what? I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait until she's unconscious. Okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, so you guys pursue, and uh, you guys run at full speed, so I guess you're using your whole action to move. Yeah. Uh, they're pretty much doing the same thing. You guys, I'll just say you get within... But 150 feet as they disappear into the stalks of wheat, and I'm just gonna make a roll for them. Now, because Betty is a rogue, she's actually like 30% faster than all of us, so she's probably quite significantly out in front. Um, I don't know if they're also rogues and therefore also very fast. But... Uh, yeah, so Betty closes the gap, so she's she's between you and them as they disappear into the wheat. Yeah, she wants to be. Yeah, uh, I mean, I would probably keep pace with the group. Yeah, you'd hold back. Especially okay. if I know Hannah might set this thing on fire. Yeah, I'm kind of like, don't go in there. All right, so you guys continue to run forward. Um, you guys can make perception checks to see if you can spot them in the wheat. Okay. All of us? Yep. Deal. So I should go eat. Not bad. Are you going to feed him? 10. OK. Violet got 16. Betty. Perceive. Sorry. Uh, sorry about that. <laughs> Mini, we had to get the cats uh, out of my room because it's dinner time. There we go. Oh, dang. I'm oh, glad nice. you perceived. I perceived. All right, so Betty and Violet, you can spot them in there. They didn't go in very far, and they've stopped. As they continue to run forward, you can hear Larry half my knee call out, Wait, wait. We will negotiate. Don't kill us. Don't cut us down, please. We have mere circus performance, please. 
Oh, be kind. You heard our smidgen. Liar. Negotiate D's nuts. Oh, <laughs> good one, D. <laughs> you've you've had that in your back pocket for a long time, haven't you? Been waiting. Actually, it just came to me, but wow. it's very appropriate. So. <laughs> um. So how far away are we from that? You guys are right now. You, you've kept running. You're about fifty feet outside of the wheat, and they've stopped. They're only about ten feet in. You can see them peppered in and amongst the wheat. Um. Larry Half Mendini's a little bit closer. He's crying out uh, for mercy. Uh, I'm just gonna cast Fireball on all <laughs> any of them that I can see, and the wheat. Okay. Uh, so let me roll that. So which one are you attacking? Because it's a bolt. So which one are you attacking in particular? Uh, I think I don't want to attack him in case we can still like recover him from the fire and from the wheat field and uh, take him back. So. Can I see any of the other ones? Oh, yeah, yeah, you can see closer? them. Yeah. Okay, so any one that, uh, I guess the one that's kind of farthest out that I can see, so I can, like, stop any of them from escaping. Okay, go ahead and make your attack roll. All right. Uh, oh, there we go. Okay, so that one is... Uh, is it roll 2D, uh, what is it? Uh, you roll a d20 to roll d10. It's a, it's a spell attack. Oops. 2d20, is that what it was? Oops. Yeah, it's a d20 uh, spell attack. Rage spell attack roll. Is that right? No, 1d20, sorry. <laughs> and, and you get plus some amount. So yeah, hang on. Probably plus six or something. Uh, yes. Wow, maybe one time. Okay. Yes, it's plus six, so okay. it's a 17 total. Oh, 17, okay. All right, so you, after uh, Larry Half Mandini begs for mercy, you fire and you see, you just see one kind of like a little bit further behind him and uh, you fire and he's, he's carrying, oh, oh, my wife and children, they will miss me, so, ah! And he, boom, <laughs> he explodes into fire, roll your damage against him. Okay, and it's 1d10. Okay. Oh, fuck! Uh, oh man! But do I light the wheat on fire? Yeah, so it actually streaks through the wheat and it starts burning, and uh, you hit the guy and it, it engulfs him, but it kind of fizzles out as quickly as it hit him. But he's got kind of these scorch marks on the side. He's kind of got a black soot on his face, um, and he he's like, "Larry, convince them, please!" <laughs> so Larry comes out with his hands up. He's got his hands up. Will please negotiate, please? I don't trust him. Um, See what he has to offer. And then, you know, once he gets close enough to talk, just grab him. Yep. <laughs> what do you, come here. Okay, so he comes out, his hands are still, he walks closer to you. He's within about 15 feet. Don't make me light the rest of you on fire. Okay. I, I, I'm so sorry. Look, why don't... Why don't we split the amount for the uh, the gold statue? I have a buyer in in Palisade. We split the money. Why didn't you wait for us to bring it back for you? I was trying to frame you. <laughs> you asshole. That's the truth. I'm sorry. <laughs> Why would we split with you now? Why don't I just kill you and take everything? Murder is not the answer. Ever. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's true. That's questionable. Actually, all not right. true at all. <laughs> Tell the rest of your little friends to come out here. So emotions, and they all come out of the wheat. What are you all going to do while we go back and get the statue? Mm, there he looks back at them. They will wait here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you said that last time, so I don't yes, know. But I was lying that time. I am not lying this time. <laughs> Are you coming with us, Larry Weenie? I will come with you. Well, as long as he comes with us, that's fine. That'll work. I... Let's not waste time then. I am um, checking something. Um, let's see how long it lasts. 
How long does Ray of Sickness last? I mean, is it just instantaneous and they only feel sick for a little while? Can I, I make think they're they're poisoned for one full round, basically. Yeah, yeah it looks like that. Oh, I'm looking at it. All right, that doesn't necessarily hold them. I don't trust them to hang out here. We're going to need some collateral. Mm, we do not have much. Okay. How about we tie up your whole group then? And make sure that you wait. Very well. We can. We are not good at escaping ropes at all. <laughs> terrible. Terrible at doing that. Tie them, them all up. Yes, good idea. Hmm. <laughs> do we still have a, a lock? <laughs> yeah, do we still have a lockable treasure chest? Yeah. They did uh, seem to have a hard time getting out of that. <laughs> you smashed yeah. that one to pieces, unfortunately. Yeah, I want to put them in some boxes. <laughs> We, what do we need with those guys? As long as we've got Larry with us, then he seems to be fine. If I mean, we bring them with us, I'm having a really hard time leaving them here. And tying them up sounds like something they want us to do. No, not at all. Shut up. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> How about... Have any way of, uh, do we have any way could of? Could you like uh, blind them, Hannah, or like you know? You know what? Take away the use of their hands. Jesus. You know, <laughs> make make the entire world smell like rotten cheese. I'm only level three, by uh. <laughs> <laughs> um. I don't know if I'm do Let's see. What can we do with them? I mean, Ooh. they want their statue back, right? Yeah. I guess actually they might just go try to steal it if we don't do anything. And you actually know that it's not their statue. You know that Right, they, right, yeah. right. Okay. Yeah, they just want to have it. Um, I do the I have a hunting trap, so if we could corner them <laughs> into an area where that's like literally the only way out, we could grab them that way. I mean, how big is it? Know. It's probably not, I mean, they're small, right? So, yeah. um,. We could just take all of them with us. Big happy family trip. That sounds great. Let's all go together. <coughs> I think a daisy chain of rope would be appropriate. Let's... Yeah. Betty has an idea. Well, not... Yeah, that's uh, an idea. Um, it's actually more like payback. Uh, and, and I walk up to Larry. Yeah. And I think I grab his blackjack. And yeah. I just smack <laughs> him on the head. All right. Um, I go totally fair. Uh, go ahead, roll your damage. It's a reasonable. It's a D six damage. All right. <laughs> All right. I'll just... Didn't she get like twelve damage? Yeah, but he sneak attack. Sneak her. attack. Yeah. Five. Well, this is kind of a sneak attack. <laughs> Surprise at well, least. Well, yeah, hang on. I don't want to kill him. It's fine. Five is, okay. five is acceptable. Doesn't she have an ally within melee range of her target? Um, and also, you can you can decide when you deal damage whether it's lethal damage or non lethal. Oh, well, there you go. I, More damage is always better. Okay. Yeah, okay. Go ahead. Add your sneak attack. Another 2d6 to it. All right. Well, I didn't even have to argue that. <laughs> players. Um, eight. No, 2d6. But I already rolled a d6. Yeah, for that's the for the blackjack. Mm -hmm. Oh, another one? Yeah. yeah. Wow. Oh, you get a d6, on... oh, and wow. you get a d6. <laughs> Boom. All right, 10. All right. <laughs> All right, is it lethal or non lethal? It's non lethal. All right, he, um, he just folds like a Safeway chicken. <laughs> <laughs> Straight to the ground, you knock him out in one hit. His eyes kind of like reel back, and he just Ooh. falls on his back, unconscious. I think I like probably just drop the black chap in the, in the dirt, and I turn around to the rest of the crew and. Yeah. <laughs> <Pretty laughs> strong. All right, yeah, we happy. politely clap. Yeah, why don't you make? Uh, is it? I don't think they have intimidate in this rule system anymore, do they? Is it just persuasion? Isn't there? There's uh, an intimidation. There's an intimidate. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Why don't you make it intimidate with um, with advantage? Okay. Oh, <laughs> Betty, I think you're the leader of the half man <laughs> yeah, weenies now. Seriously, you're the new leader. So they, all of them, immediately 
like they're uh, there there's almost like they've seen a god <laughs> and they all drop down to one knee and and one of them in the back she is like a god <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> she has been sent to save us from Larry Halfman <laughs> If we follow you, oh sweet Betty, smidgen, leader of all, we follow your word. Fuck that guy on the ground. <laughs> He's just gotten a deal sword. Bunch of trouble. I play along, I kneel to her, I'm like, ah, oh, yes. Yeah. Uh. We're, we're all kneeling down. I'm like, great, alright, let's go for, then. For Betty, <laughs> full man weenie. <laughs> <laughs> We got an army like now. Feeling, like, nice work. I scoop yeah. up half man weenie who's all limp and I just kind of potato sack him over my shoulder. <laughs> all right, so you guys uh, pick them up. The smidgens off, the half man weenies all fall in line. Where are you going? Back to the sheriff okay. to collect the reward yeah. for half mandini and then steal the gold statue for ourselves and then sell it to the buyer that half mandini was going to sell it to on our own behalf. Somewhere right. in there, hook up. Okay. Right. Yeah. Marshall. Boop. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you guys head back to the sheriff's um, office. It looks like he's just returning. It looks like him, the boys, kept on having a few drinks, but they're stumbling back towards uh, work now in the middle of the afternoon. And uh, they see you come around the corner with an uh, unconscious half mandini over your shoulder, followed by the rest of the circus crew. And uh, he looks in your direction. Oh. <laughs> oh you got all the crew there, by the looks of it. Oh, good work, good work. Um, why did you ladies come on in and um, we'll put all those guys in jail and uh, have a conversation? And I go like in. this to Marshall. Marshall gives you a, gives you a confident nod, and uh, the, the sheriff opens up the door, and you guys all head in outside. What do you want to do? Um, I hold up. Once we get in there, yeah, I'm like special delivery. I hold him up under the armpits like a floppy, like, doll. (laughs) And I'm like, how much is the reward for this one? Well, as you know, you heard my last words. Uh, Perhaps you weren't there, but Dee heard what I had to say. And um, he reaches into his belt and pulls out a dagger. And he's like, it was pain, pain of death for him to return. So I suppose that'll be his punishment. And he goes to stab um, Larry Half Mandini through the heart. Do you stop him? Uh, yeah, just out of reflex, I kind of like, not even like. <laughs> like he might. Uh, What's wrong? What's wrong? You brought him in. That's that'd be a reward. But well, isn't there like a like a trial or something? Don't you guys have a justice system or? Yeah, I make the calls. Well, it's it's purely logical. He was arrested once before. Uh, pain of death on coming back. I think it's perfectly reasonable. I, I just think kind of, he's about to pay us, and that seems just fine. I'm just kind of looking at him like I, it is like poor little unconscious little doll face. I'm kind of you like can see it. you can see a little tear trickle out of his unconscious. <laughs> I mean, you already got him. Why do you got to kill him? He's not doing anything. I jiggle him, and I say suggestion. Why don't we throw him into one of the cells for now, uh, and you take more pleasure in murdering him when he wakes up, and we're gone. Well, you're a smart, you're a smart lady. All right, throw the bastard into the cell. Great. I kind of am like, oh, I guess that's fair, and I put him in there. All right, so you hock him in there. The rest of the um, the half Mandinis, uh, they just are kind of standing around. But what about us? Oh, you're you follow Betty now. You're reformed. And so the sheriff looks. Is that true? <laughs> it is. Very well. You run. You run a tight ship, Constable Betty. <laughs> you gotta say. I like that you've not only finished your investigation, but you've turned some hearts around and done some good here. I don't suppose your resume is finished. <laughs> you know what? It's not. But I gotta get the reward anyway. So why don't I head up to my office and I will. Get you the gold, and I'll finish my resume before you leave. Resume? The queens aren't looking for another member. You, you, you already knew that Betty the constable was looking to hire, you know, some help. <laughs> the fact that we 
<clears throat> you know, convinced Constable Betty to join our team shouldn't affect her future plans. That's exactly what I meant. Uh, now that we have a fourth, the queens aren't looking for another member. Mm. Oh, well, what a, what a strange situation just happened here, but... <laughs> It's always well. good to have it on file. <laughs> I agree. Well, well, you know what? Sit yourselves down. I will get my resume and the reward of 10 gold pieces. And uh, perhaps we can have another drink before you carry on your way. I like he drinks. Goes, he goes Excellent. Up, <laughs> leaving you with the, the rest of the half Mandinis and the two guards. Uh, he goes alone. No one goes with him. He's going by himself right now. Who else is, who wants to go with him? I mean, I guess when he comes back and I have an for idea. drinks, Hannah, we'll go ahead. I have a plan for when he comes back. We don't need to go. Okay, we all wink at each other. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so he, he comes back a few minutes later, and he's got a little bag of gold, and he throws it. Uh, you know, he's what half a cluster. He throws it towards D. <laughs> there, there, there's your payment. Now, what say you to a drink, ladies? I say yes, Marshall. What, what do you say, <laughs> Hannah? Yeah, let's go have a drink. Very well. After all of you. And I open <laughs> the door. Okay, so. Thanks, Fa Hannah. He, he wanders out and he's kind of muttering to himself, the sheriff. It's, it's a wonder I keep my job with how terrible I am at it. And he continues <laughs> to walk towards the uh, unicorn circle. Um, everyone has filed out. As Hannah. we're walking there, um, can I cast Mage Hand and try to use it to get the keys from him? Yeah. <laughs> nice. Go for it. Yeah, you cast a spell. So you don't have to, you just cast it, I guess. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> but I am going to make you uh, do a stealth check with your Mage Hand to see if you can okay. it without being caught. <laughs> oh no. Wow. I tried, you guys. I tried. That's a three. Me? <laughs> oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make hasty. You know, he still has to make a roll. Maybe he roll a one. I should have asked. It I could. Have asked it could happen. Uh, assistance. Uh, he definitely just rolled a natural twenty. So <gasps> Fuck. nice. So he looks down and he sees the keys kind of pulling up uh, off of the latch. On his um, who I who grab, did that? I grab his butt. <laughs> Just straight. Ugh. All right. Let's see. I'm mean, gonna really get in there. All right. I'll give you another stealth check because of the distraction. No, no advantage though. Oh God. Ah! 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 Wow. Why are they all so bad? Your mage hands like flopping around. So, ah. so, so believe it or not, I uh, with my bonuses got a four. Uh, so the, the butt grab was enough to distract. He's like, whoa! And he kind of lifts up as the keys pop off the belt. Yes. And you you crap them into your hand real quickly. Uh, so I kind of hide them behind my back and yep. sort of start to kind of like fade to the back of the group. Okay. Um, and then I, as I'm fading back, I kind of like grab Betty to take her with me because she's the one who knows how this shit works. And I know she was telling me about it in the bathroom, but I'm also drunk, so I'm gonna need some help. <laughs> okay. I just, I just drape my arms around Anwan and I say, I'm just feeling a little thirsty. And I see them kind of hanging back, so I'm like hurting everyone else, like, yeah, drinks, drinks, out, okay. let's go. Everyone heads off leaving the sheriff's station to empty. <laughs> yeah, and as we're like, as they're all walking in, I'm just like, oh my god, is that the Big Dipper? Betty, is that the Big Dipper? <laughs> and like, lay it off like we're stargazing, and then just say like, all right, let's go get that fucking statue. All right. So you guys head back. Uh, you have the keys in your hand, so you have access to pretty much everything in this uh, the sheriff's office. What do you want to do? Uh, I mean, I say we walk in. When we walk in, are is are the the guys in the cells? Are they still? Is the um, is Mandini still out? He's, and then, he's still unconscious. Yeah. Is Drake <laughs> awake or is he sleeping? Uh, Drake is sitting there watching you, kind of giving you the evil eye. His arms are crossed. He's kind of sitting up against the wall. As I walk in, I'm just like like finger gun. I'm just like <laughs> 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 like walk over to the door, like pull the key out. <laughs> <laughs> unlock it um and uh 
uh, after you, Betty, go get this thing. Um, so I guess we go up to the office. Yeah. Okay. So you head up to the office. You get uh, again lock the top, unlock the top door. Um, you can see the statue is right on the desk there, and uh, the and the room is empty. Betty, you know how to pick this thing up? Um. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> the best chance we're gonna have. All right, might take me a couple. Good luck trying to pick that up. I grab it. <laughs> nope, doesn't move. <laughs> uh, God, I like, every her, time I, I heard it, I'm like, I'll remember that. I don't need to write it down. Um, I grab her by the shoulders and I'm like, I don't care that you take drugs. And then I start shaking. Her. <laughs> <laughs> you have to remember. Uh, uh, if you okay, make um, you can make a intelligence check to try to remember it. <laughs> and I'll I'll tell you uh, how off you were by the first statement, depending on your role. Okay, sounds fair. Ooh. Nice. Wheat, your rolls are just on fire, dude. Yeah. Good today. Okay, well, the first three words I'll give to you good luck picking. That's the first three words you remember. And it's, and it's a five word sentence. That's what you remember. Easy mode. Good luck picking that up. All right, and I whoosh. Yes. <laughs> you pick it up and. Uh, yeah, it's it's fits in. The, it's big enough that you have to have two hands to hold it, but it's it's light as a feather now that that's not been activated. That's what she said. I like picked it up, <laughs> I, and I'm like, do you know how much gold we could hustle in the tavern with this? I mean, maybe a different tavern. Let's get let's get the group and get the fuck out. I, I, I'm, I'm just going <laughs> like wide eyes, like <laughs> this cold statue. <laughs> I'm like remembering how fucking tall the sheriff is and how scary looking he is. So I Very scary. To just like get the <laughs> hell out of there. All right. um, so uh, I guess we uh, kind of head back out. Okay. And as we head back out, I kind of like flourish at the statue again towards Drake and just be like, hi, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he just, he's like, oh, we'll see each other again. You evil elf will see <laughs> each other again. And you guys leave him behind. Mm -hmm. All right, so you guys, uh, you get back to the tavern and uh, everyone's having a few rounds of drinks. It looks like Violet's already moved on to um, at least first base at the with Mr. Marshall. I'm sitting in Marshall's lap and I imagine that he's like stroking the stubble of my beard because we've been on the road for like two days. So it's like just starting and I'm just like in heaven. <laughs> uh, I tell Betty to wait outside for a second and I immediately like I go in and I go right over to D and just kind of like grab her back back and be like I need to borrow this and walk outside and tell Betty to put the statue into the backpack to hide it and then um, just open the door and come back inside um, and kind of just like look around and like smile at the other queens and just be like it's a good 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 night <laughs> all right kind of so, let them know that we got the thing done that we needed to do and i'm like it's also like what time is it <laughs> uh it's right now it's like getting towards dinner we'll say i'm just like oh my god it is getting late you know I think we better, we better, we better just, maybe we, we should go. We should go. We should go. Go, go where? We should go. Oh. Sleep, where oh, we sleep. I'm tired. Yeah. Ooh, mm. Can I uh, bring Betty, Marshall? Uh, you look pretty hurt, too. <laughs> like, rub the back of my head. Yeah. Uh, still a big bump here. We need to get Betty to, uh, to the doctor. Our doctor. Doctor, it's fine. Fixer. So the sheriff's like, <laughs> oh, yes, I mean, it makes sense. You don't want to have a concussion for very long. You don't want to go to bed with a concussion. I've 
read that in various medical journals. Um, see, even the sheriff agrees. We yep. should all go see the doctor. It's been fantastic getting to know you. Oh, ladies, I ladies, it's that. been an honor. It's been an honor. You know, <laughs> this town is, is boring and stale, and you come in, and it's been a whirlwind. I'll tell you that much, ladies. <laughs> I look at Wait. Marshall, and I'm like, it would have been fun, babe, but we both know this never would have worked out. <laughs> I have an orc back home, and you live in this stupid town. Uh, <laughs> I have an orc back home as well. And oh, that's sweet. Uh, that's like so we have something in common. Anyway, I like <laughs> pet his face. Beautiful but fleeting. Star-crossed. <laughs> I just boop uh, him one more time as I leave. Yeah. Um, and then I kind of heard them out the door, and... I I hope that I know where we're heading. Um, <laughs> we uh, uh, I as we're leaving, I'm like, uh, did we ask Half Mandini where his buyer was? Well, it was, he was in Palisade. We know, but we don't know right. more than that. You also right. have the entire crew of the Half Mandinis with you. Yeah, I was thinking yeah. we just go back yeah. there. We just go back, or yeah. we have them with us. So we just ask. We can just ask them once we get out, right? Yeah. Yeah, they they say, oh, we don't uh, we don't know his name, but we know the building that uh, Larry had the conversation, with, and we can show you where that is. Well, I was actually gonna ditch you here, but uh, what? I meant I that I totally said that under my breath. She <laughs> said pitch you. She said pitch you on a business plan. Uh, Betty loves for, business, uh, but go. we don't have time for that right now. So we'll do that later. <laughs> All right. Let's go home to that building. You guys, you guys, uh, leave the town of Frontier behind. Get back to the coastal road, and continue your uh, journey northward back to Palisade. And, and that is a great time <laughs> for us to take our second break. Perfect. Find out next awesome. what happens to the queens as they go to Palisade in the final part of our second chapter of Rat Queens D and D. Don't go anywhere. We'll see you in a minute. Bye.
Welcome back to the third and final installment of episode two of Rat Queen's D&D, presented by Misclicks. The queens have had quite a profitable day so far. All and, in all, a good adventure, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. and now we're headed back toward Palisade. Yeah, so, um, yeah, so we basically, they, uh, you have a half, uh, the half man DD crew has now joined you. Um, you guys are on the road to, to Palisade. You know that, I mean, you roughly know where Frontiers, you've been past it before. It's probably going to be into the evening by the time that you get back. But the road isn't quiet along the way. In fact, as you crest one of the hills and you can see the ocean, you know, to the, to the to east of you, you see ahead on the side of the road a single standing heavy oak door on the side of the road. It's about 300 feet up ahead. It's just off to the left side of the road. It's like just standing up. Standing. Just standing up. There's no frame. It's just a standing up door on the side of the road ahead of you. If there's anything that I have learned from running Dungeons and Dragons myself, it's that we need to go open that door. I, I'm still a little buzzed, but I'm pretty sure that's weird. I'm curious about the door. Uh, yeah, D, D says, this is perfectly logical. There's a reasonable explanation for this. And she walks over to the door. Okay. So you walk, uh, closing the distance to the door, and it's facing out towards the ocean. So it's kind of like parallel to the road. Mm -hmm. And uh, you, you're about 10 feet away from it. And you can see that it has a very ornate carving um, inlaid with gold. It's actually very beautiful. Um, very intricate. Even looking at it, you think it's probably some kind of elven design. And there's no handle. All you can see is a single keyhole. Um, does it look like it's in a frame or could it be picked up? Or It doesn't look like it's in a frame. It's just kind of there. Uh, it's, yeah. even, it's even floating a little bit off the ground, maybe by about a half an inch. Uh -huh. Can I roll uh, like, history or something to know about the door and the ornate decor on it? Sure. I, I would like to roll Arcana to check out this floating business. Sure. Oh, tell me about this door. Finally. Nice. Tell us both about the door. <laughs> this is pretty obscure stuff. Hannah, you remember in the classes that you did attend at Mage University <laughs> uh, that there was, in some of the more advanced classes, you were barely kind of remember their talk about sometimes these doors are literal gateways. Uh, they can be like uh, walking from one side of the world to the other. Um, generally, you have to have uh, some kind of device to use these doors, usually protected. Um, but that's really all you know about them. You don't know how the magic works. It's, it's, okay. pretty, it's pretty powerful magic from what you remember. Okay. Uh, and uh, do you I guess I share that information with the team. With Dee's Arcana, you know that it is, um, I mean, it is, it is basically a, like a, it is, like you can get the sense that the, oh, the writings and the carvings are some kind of teleportation uh, runic. Mm. So it, it, that door will open to some place. But I can't tell where. You have no idea. So yeah. we basically kind of both know generally the same thing and confirm that with each other and tell yeah. me. Um, um, Betty, come over here. Can you pick this lock for us? <laughs> so I picked up a silver key in the in the first part of the campaign, and I think it was to the chest, but I'm just going to, like, casually pull that key out and try it on the door. All right, Look at so it, hurt. Walk, All right, so you walk over to it, and when you step within about five feet, you feel this kind of uh, almost like a wind, um, but you have the key out, and there's it just starts to glow a little bit as you it feels like you're stepping through a wall of some kind. There's a force there, and you step up to it, and you get to the door. You're going to try the key in the keyhole? Yeah, but if I, like, feel like I go through something... Yeah, you do. Um, I, I might actually, uh, like, extend my hand and say, you know, like, someone, someone grab hold of me. I oblige. Okay. And then with the other hand, unlock the key. All right, so you, you turn it, and the door, rather than 
opening, it just slowly starts to slide the, as though it's disappearing into the ground, but it's not. It's just kind of slowly, just kind of, you hear a whirring sound, and it reveals a long kind of brick corridor that ends in another door about 15 feet down. And it's like this old mossy brick. <laughs> There's kind of a weird smell that comes out. Um, in fact, the, the smell kind of, you're, it kind of tickles a memory a little bit. There's a there's a certain scent to it, uh, Betty. You can make uh, because of your uh, your one of your background skills. You can make a wisdom check. See if you know what that is. Okay. Nine. Can it? It smells familiar. It's definitely a drug of some kind, but you're not sure which one. And 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 where do I think the source is coming from? Just, that, just general sense? coming from that door at the that's revealed at this mystical hallway. And when you if you look around the kind of the sides, you can't see anything. It's only when you're looking straight on that you can see this corridor. I think I turn around and go. I totally think we need to go down there. <laughs> well, I if agree. you're going, I'll go with you. Yeah, let's go. I mean. All Who right. knows where it'll take us, but are we I, in any hurry to get to Palisades? I trust Betty's instincts. The only reason we need to go to Palisades is to sell this statue for more gold. So maybe we'll meet someone along the way and we won't even have to worry about selling it there. All right. So who, what's the marching order? How are you guys moving down this corridor? Uh, Betty, you go first. I'll follow her. I'll be, yeah, and I'll be behind. I'll be behind by. Normally I would argue this, but because you said I was smelling something, Potential drug I might have I will go for. <laughs> okay. All right. So uh, the four of you, uh, are you taking all of the half Mandinis with you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, let's take them with us. There are so support seven, staff. Two, 11 of yes. you. Um, In fact, out. what a great opportunity for a training exercise. The rest <laughs> of the half Mandinis, you take the lead. You yeah. remember yeah. the skills I taught you? Great. Look, we've got seven traps worth of people to get through. <laughs> So we'll be fine. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So uh, you said in the half Mandinis, uh, you guys are going to wait back at the entrance while they go forward? Uh, no, we follow them. We'll kind of follow behind them. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. So you guys, uh, there's that key is still glowing. It has like, uh, there's kind of a weird humming that emanates from it. And it feels like there's kind of a weight pushing down on all of you, like from all sides as you move through this corridor. But the Betty, you in particular, that key seems to keep that pressure off. Um, you don't feel it as much uh, as, as everyone else does. Um, but you continue on, and it ends in another door, exactly like the one that you opened earlier. And there's no door handle. There's just a keyhole. OK. Uh, Betty? I, I guess I just repeat the same actions. Where I'm like, hold on to me again, just in case. I grab on. All right. You click it open, and this time it opens into a very svelte-looking room with throw pillows everywhere. There's nice silk, purple silk things draping, like uh, scarves draping from the ceiling. And there, it's like the whole room is just filled with pillows. The room is about 10 feet by 10 feet. And there's a guy laying on top of these piled up pillows. Like They're about five feet high when it gets to the back end of the room. And he's laying there, and he's smoking out of a hookah and he looks like he's blazed out of his mind and he just he's wearing um like a, a robe that has covered in stars and moons he looks like he's human but a little weird you've never seen someone with the kind of eyes he has which is they seem to be changing color as he's sitting there and he leans back oh thank the gods you guys how long have you been gone do we know you? Oh yeah, we partied last night. <laughs> Picked you up on the, on the side of the road. You guys came in and we we partook of the good stuff. And uh, seems that you took my key. But I've been stuck in here. I was hoping you would come back. <laughs> Who guys, are you? Oh, me. Ah, uh, I am fractal. Fractal the wizard. Not very original, but that is what I take to calling myself. Are you guys back to return my key and perhaps 
partake in another round of pleasant essences. Where is I look around and I'm like, do, do any of us remember this guy? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like trying really I hard to. I try his stuff. You want to try his stuff? Yeah, I walk He's over. Like, ah, up here, young smidgen. You handled this better than anyone else last night. I've even increased the strength of your eventual return. And uh, he hands it over to you. And the, inside the hookah, you can see it's just like this swirling smoke that's all different colors like a rainbow. It's constantly shifting. Uh, but you can make a perception check. As okay, you I will. Man, you're rolling good today. Jeez. Oh, yeah. Wow, holy moly. Damn. 19. For a brief second, you swear that as the there's a portion of that smoke was and it stops swirling, you think you glimpse a fairy inside there but it's yeah. really really quick it's really really quick you're not exactly sure if that was real or if you imagined it i just hold Smoking my hand out like junk. waiting for him all right so he <laughs> has it to you <laughs> just... <laughs> okay. what a convenient prop you have at your fingertips okay. make a constitution save <laughs> 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 Uh, wow, my, how is my constitution zero? Because I'm so tiny. Oh, oh my gosh. God. Teach me your ways, DJ Wheat. So sh you take this massive hit and you can feel like this cloud kind of going over your body. And it feels like it's kind of sitting somewhere in your brain. And you it, it doesn't really like overtake you like you think it would. You seem to be kind of resistant to it. Uh, but... You all witness, everyone else, as she lays back, she actually starts to float a what? little bit above the pillows. She just kind of like, looks like she's doing a backstroke in the air. Nice. Uh, and uh, Fractal, he just nods. It's the good shit. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's get rid of the half a weenies. Get rid of the half a weenies and give me that. All right. They're part of the family now. Sharing is caring. <laughs> They, yeah, they, they, we would like to try too. <laughs> There's enough so, of the good stuff to go around, right, Fractal? Oh, yeah. Well, now that I have my key back, we can go anywhere. Anywhere, anywhere you want. Can we go to Palisade? <laughs> can we go to that house in Palisade? Boring. I said I anywhere. Anywhere. All right, if that's what you want. If you want to go to Palisade... <laughs> I suppose, but um, first you must smoke. Seems fair. So the half Mandinis all kind of start crawling up the pillows, and um, he just kind of snaps his fingers, and you can see all of a sudden all of the additional uh, hookah pipes just kind of grow out the side of the hookah itself and start floating around. Um, you swear you hear some kind of like psychedelic music coming out of the walls. Uh, <laughs> If you partake, you have to make a constitution. Say big throw. Well, I partake. All right. Make it. Blink. I got a seven. <laughs> I'm blazed out of my gourd. Okay. I guess, uh, like, Violet looks at Hannah to see if she's going to. I'm like, well, we're not going to fucking walk there, so. <laughs> Whatever. I still don't trust it, but I'm not, I'm too like lazy, and we're too far into this corridor, and I'm just like, fuck it. Like Betty's already gone. Like Dee's gone. Let's yeah, let's just do it. All right. If she does, yeah. I look around. Everyone else's, and I'm like, oh well. All right, make a save. Oh dang, that dwarf right. resistance. Yeah, that dwarf resistance. Yes. <laughs> uh, Hannah, you you uh, both you and D, uh, you get that same kind of cloud effect where you float back, but. As you do, you kind of, your mind gets overtaken with this cloud. And as you start to float, it feels like you're backwards swimming through liquid stars. And you see, you're kind of swimming past yourself and you're starting to see the events that happened the last time you were here and you're witnessing it happening in backwards motion as though time itself is reversing. Um, <laughs> you're basically passing yourself because the exact same thing happened the night before. And <laughs> That version of you just kind of waves real lazily at you as she swims by. And I'm like, hey. <laughs> I 
and uh, you adrift in stars. Uh, all of you kind of feel like you're floating away, and all of a sudden, within a second, you feel this magical whoosh, and you are all standing immediately outside of Palisade as though he honored your wishes to return there. And you can kind of hear this weird laughter in the background echoing in the sky above you. And he, and just the briefest of words, really, Palisade of all places. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's fucking awesome. <laughs> all right. So. <laughs> <laughs> Look, money. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so you see it in the distance. It's not you're not right in front of it. You can still see it in the distance. So I'll read the, the next portion. The familiar outline of Palisade beckons you home. Its uneven perimeter wall, its rancid cabbage-esque smell, and its appalling attempt at architecture. Ah, yes, it's good to be back. As you navigate the bumpy, underfunded road, you see a crew of people walk through the front gate and take a stand as though waiting for your arrival. As a matter of small interest, they are armed and armored but it's likely coincidental. A snotty looking aristocrat steps forward from the throng of stuffy fake knights. Should I kill you now or wait for the trial and kill you after? Uh, maybe not so coincidental after all. Thanks to a proper gentleman by the name of Gary, we knew you were on your way back. Best keep this unfortunate circumstance out of the town, yes? You vaguely remember this man. Or at least you remember your fist connecting with that face at some point between this moment and that black hole fugue that your memory was the night before. And I want my ring back. You can hand it over now, or I can take it from your bloated carcasses. Your choice. I don't bother running like cowards this time. We is, finished this. Is this Lavender? Uh, you guys now can see him. Where is my... Uh... Now you see him in his full glory. <laughs> Stupid hat guy. Yeah. Stupid hat guy, Gary. And his name's Gary. I thought he said Gary told him. Gary told uh, him that you were Bogan. Yes, Gary, Gary again. Uh, Ugh. Uh, oh, Gary. I hate Gary. <laughs> Gary is literally the worst. Gary always fucks everything up. <laughs> Gary. Is Gary, there is he like somewhere off? Can we see? Uh, him? You could see him off camera. Just, God, you know, Gary. On the, on the wall. I just like look up and I'm like, fuck you, <laughs> Gary. <laughs> Gives the sheepish. Um, so there's, but... there is uh, four of them. Um, and uh, yeah, they are armed and they are armored. And it looks like they are quite serious. And he looks around. Now, which one of you has my ring? I remember something about a ring. <laughs> yeah. But I don't remember... Uh, all of you were had uh, an item. Uh, I think it was Betty had the ring. So let me see. I it. think so. <laughs> yeah. Um, but Betty, uh, Betty was the only the one ring. to detect anything, and then there was also something in Violet's pocket, right? Yeah. So there's the ring uh, that Betty had. She also stole the silver key from Violet's um, pocket. And uh, Dee had the new outfit, of course, and Hannah had the mustache. <laughs> That's right. I didn't know I had an item because Betty just stole my item. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I thought that was Betty's. Um, I just tell him, I'm like, if we fucked you up, you must have given us a good reason. Listen, we're just here to cash in. Why don't you step aside? So we don't. You give me my ring back and I will. It's mine. It's my family's ring. You cannot just take it from me. I'm oh. assuming I have no idea that Betty has this. So I'm like, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Or where your special ring is, but we don't have it. You do not speak to me that way. I am Sir Peter Dandelion of Lavender. <laughs> you will hand over my ring at once. What's so special about your ring anyways? I like it. <laughs> Listen, Guys. Dandelion, as much as we like your ring, or you like your ring, we don't know where it is. So what do you want us to do? I think because I think this is all really funny, I finally take the ring out and put it on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. Uh, I see her do this. That I'm like, ring right there, that, that little thieving smidgen. Yes, I see you. How do we know that's your ring? It could be any ring. Yeah. You could just be saying that's your ring. It's probably hers. The monkey's on my armor. 
That is a family heirloom. Thank you very much. I found it in the trash. You did not. You must have thrown it away. Why'd you, you throw biking, away your family's you were ring? Breaking my fingers and wrenching it off of them, off of my fingers. It was not pleasant. I would have my ring back, please, or I'll be I did Come say on. I found it in the trash. I was not wrong. Are no, you calling was... Constable <laughs> Betty a liar? Yes, I am. And he goes to reach for his blade. I look at the half Mandinis and I'm like, they just ca- he just called Betty a liar. What are you guys going to do about that? Mm. You hear a bunch of ching, 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 ching as they all draw. <laughs> <laughs> I step back and like make room for them to Yeah, step- I'm like, I don't know. I mean. Very well. If that is how it is going to be. I shall cut down your army of ridiculous smidgens, and then I shall cut down your tick back wiring. <laughs> and uh, the half Mandini's charge forward. I'm just going to do a couple of quick rolls to see All right. how there. What are you doing as the half Mandini's charge to defend the honor of their god? Uh, I'm stepping back, preparing to light these fools on fire if they won't get out of our way, <laughs> and the yeah. Mandini's fail. If the half Laughing. Mandini's are actually running, they are. Then I want to take the ring and go, hey, Lavender, and throw it behind him. <laughs> okay, so you can make a uh, range to see how far you can huck that thing. They're pretty close to you, so they're they're about, like, 20 feet away. Okay. Uh, so what what kind of a roll would I do? I just do, like, a ranged, uh, like a, yeah, ranged attack, so you, with proficiency. So basically what you'd roll for your sharp roll. Okay. Oh, damn. oh my gosh, Marcus! Betty is, Betty is the best of us. What on earth? I don't know. I don't know. All right, so he sees the charging smidge, and he sees the ring go over top of his head uh, to behind him. Ah, my honor is at stake. I must kill these these smidges. <laughs> dodge, man, dodge! <laughs> The name of Sir Peter Dandelion of Lavender is at stake. <laughs> All right, so they charge forward both sides. There's four of them against the seven of them. And uh, there's you can just like blades and you can hear screaming. And it's it's a horrific battle that lasts about 10 seconds. And uh, <laughs> after about 10 seconds, all of the smidgens are just kind of either wounded, like they've taken a stab and they're lying down. Uh, but they managed to like basically take one of his guys down. They just mauled him stabbed him a few times and he's laying on the ground wounded so there's three of them left um and seven of your smidgens are not they're not dead they're just hurt poor little smidgens and he says ah that's what happens when you send smidgens to fight for you now i will get my ring and he turns around to go pick up the ring puts it on his finger do we get like an attack of opportunity while he turns around if you want to i don't but maybe one of our ranged players does (laughs) <laughs> well, you're not just gonna like. I think yeah. opportunity attacks are only melee anyway. Yeah. Oh, okay, then yeah, never mind. Put the ring on. Very well. It was quite amusing, but uh, I have matters to attend to. Good day to you! What kind of matters? Who are you anyway? I am a rich man. Well, that has nothing to do with who you are. Did we get drunk with you last night? Well. We, uh, we had an encounter, you could say, and, uh, you beat the shit out of us and took my ring. <laughs> that much was clear, but why? I tried to hit on the elf. You, you, you I'm sorry, could you speak up? Huh? I, try, I tried to hit on the elf. <laughs> sorry. Oh, God. Oh. She made a With girl. that stupid oh, hat on? I'm going to bought my hat. It's a family heirloom as well. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't take kindly to it. Well, that's a horrible hat. I mean, what do you want? It is a really stupid hat. It's so stupid. Are you particular? Like, uh, I mean, I don't know. Do you want to buy a gold statue? A gold statue? Not well, just any gold statue. It's magical. Well, uh, actually, I'm in town. I hired some uh, some folks, and in fact, now that I look at these smidgens, they look quite familiar to me. <laughs> what a coincidence! 
<laughs> yes, I am looking for a st You have one. Ah, well, uh, yeah. Take we've away. recently come into possession of a gold statue of great, great value, and mm. uh, might be willing to part with it for a dear, dear price. Well, oh, oh, oh. and that's why I mean, it wouldn't happen to be the golden statue of impossible gravity, would it? <laughs> Now that you mention it, it might be. How much you got for it? I uh, was going to pay these uh, smidgens a hundred gold pieces for it. <laughs> a hun hundred <laughs> gold. <laughs> I look around. <laughs> hundred, hundred gold? <laughs> my sword costs... Uh, I have no idea how much my sword costs. My sword probably costs about five gold. But no, then like <laughs> nine hundred gold. I mean... <laughs> Hundred gold. Very well, very well. How about you give us all of the gold you have? <laughs> I see. In return for the statue and as an apology for hitting on me, thinking that you had any yeah. chance. Ew, and gross. so that we don't finish the rest of you off right now. Very well. We are not. We are not fighters. It's true. We are simply handsome men who wear stupid hats. Money with fancy hats. <laughs> stupid hats. I will pay you 300 gold for the statue. That's all I have on me, and that is what I can afford right now. I mean... 300 gold is no laughing matter. I feel like somebody else in policy might want it for more. Maybe we'll just go shop it around first. Ah, fine, 350, that's all I have on me. <laughs> all that, 350, please! I mean, I guess as an apology... <laughs> I guess since we did inconvenience you by stealing mm. your ring, yeah. we can let it go. You Thank you. Oh, Violet, you are such a kind woman. <laughs> I just, I know how these up. things work. I understand family heirlooms and stupid hats. I get it. I'm also getting really bored of talking to this guy. Yeah. <laughs> I want to go drink, so 350 sounds fine to me. Yeah, he's not very interesting. <laughs> All right, so he hands over a... Uh, there's a random tail in the <laughs> yep, yep. surprise. <laughs> um, he hands over 350 gold in exchange for the statue, and it seems like he's happy to carry on. Um, he, him and his men, you know, they pick up their wounded friend and they carry him back into town. We have made so much money this adventure. Let yes. me tell you, we oh, have almost so all of much it money. right then. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So what do you do? Uh, we take the gold and I look at the group and I say, how about a drink? Yep. Lots of drinks. Let's many, go get drunk. Many drinks. drunks. All right, so uh, with Sir Dandelion of Lavender behind you and a few of the clues finally coming together about the night of debauchery that led to waking up in a strange forest, you feel as though you might just drink a little bit easier tonight. Even as you put back another drink at the Black Setter. You turn to see a man, arms crossed and sporting a rather dark red patch above his lip. You owe me 500 gold pieces for a wagon that you stole from me. <laughs> Plus the items that I was delivering to the tavern. He leans heavy on the table and glares directly at Hannah. And I'll take my fucking mustache back too. <laughs> <laughs> mustache? Yeah, remember Hannah had a mustache? <laughs> yep. And that's the end of the adventure! <laughs> it was still on me, I just slowly peel it off. <laughs> <laughs> I totally forgot. <laughs> oh my gosh, that was so much fun. That we, was pretty great. We almost made enough to pay him back. We did! Almost. We're so close. <laughs> Guess we have to go on another adventure. I and guess you will have to, pay to make, yeah. make all that gold up. <laughs> yep. Oh my oh, gosh, God. that was so fun. Well, uh, as is tradition at the end of Miss Click shows, let's take a moment to hear from each of the players anything cool that they've got going on in the near future or where we can find more about them on the internet. So let's leave Curtis for last this time and start with the players. How about Britt? Yeah, hi, I'm Britt Wiseman. Um, and I play D&D uh, Prophecy on Wednesdays at 6 here on Miss Clips, and I play Apocalypse World on Thursdays at 6 uh, Pacific 
here on Misclicks as well. And this was so, so, so much fun. Curtis, thank you so much. This is like a dream <laughs> filled. Uh, so I really appreciate it. And I'm very thankful that I have so many great people to play with as well. So thank you guys. Ooh, and let's add our uh, like first thing that comes to mind as your favorite uh, moment in the episodes. Oh my God. They're <laughs> so... I think I was just happy that I rolled my mage hand and with Dee's help succeeded at doing literally anything <laughs> all of my shitty rolls. I think it's my moan of triumph, so let's <laughs> say that one. All right, how about uh, Steven? Hello, I'm Steven Silent Osiris, the O is a zero. You can find me all around the internet at Silent Osiris, um, including but not limited to um, King Arthur Pendragon, which is Saturdays at 10.30 a.m. Eastern Time, so, yeah. And it's going super, super fun. Uh, favorite, um, I think it's probably obvious that I had a really fun time seducing Anwan. <laughs> <laughs> well done. That was really yeah. cool. I, I think that's it for me. Marcus, what about you? Uh, hi, I'm Marcus, DJ Wheat. Uh, I do have some fun things coming up here pretty soon, but yeah, um, uh, yeah I'll uh, be gone for a week, so that'll be nice. Uh, I do play uh, role-playing games over on Roleplay as well, but I want to say thank you to the Miss Clicks crew for having me on to play as Betty on Rat Queens. It was a blast. I love it. My favorite part was probably... Uh, because I like to do this a lot when we role play is you just kind of kind of be quick on your feet and when uh, when I totally failed that stealth roll and just got to talk <laughs> my way out of it that was my favorite part tonight that was awesome that was really cool uh, I am Anna Prosser I'm at Anna Prosser on just about everything you can find me playing Dungeons and Dragons on Tuesdays at 4 o'clock on the Wizards of the Coast official channel WOTC underscore DND uh, and then right after that at 6, I play here on Miss Click's uh, D&D Devotion, which is our second edition homebrew campaign. We play that for three hours. So hopefully you'll come hang out with me. And um, my favorite part of the episode, it was so cool because throughout, every time we were kind of in these situations, it was like my head popped into illustrations of Rat Queens, like how I would see it on a comic book page. And there were so many of those oh, yeah. moments where I was like, Oh my gosh, this is so Rat Queens. This is so Rat Queens, which is obvious because we have Curtis here. So obviously it's so Rat Queens. But I think the most moment like that was when the ogre pooped and barfed <laughs> on bo both D and I from both ends. Yep, and we were both great. just like, yeah. So it was gross and very true to the story. So I really enjoyed that. <laughs> what about you, Curtis? Uh, I'm Curtis. You can find me uh, on Twitter at Curtis J. Weeb, and um, I have a, a website as well where I, I do post a blog once in a while. Uh, I do talk about mostly about my work, but I also talk about uh, mental health stuff there. So if you ever want to read some of the articles that I've written about that, uh, feel free to do that. That's curtisweeb.com. And uh, I have Rat Queens, an, our new arc with our new artist Owen is coming out on March 1st. And I'm very excited about that. It's kind of back to the wacky wild adventures and feels kind of like this game, actually. <laughs> so there's there's some parallels there, not going to lie. Um, but uh, yeah, and I also, uh, we've taken a bit of a break right now, but we are planning to come back. Uh, I host, yeah, I used to host a show called The D20 Babes, and you can find our Twitch channel at twitch.tv slash D20 Babe, singular. <laughs> One babe. Uh, yeah. And uh, yeah, and my favorite moment, um, I, I liked playing uh, Dick the Word Jerk. <laughs> I, I liked I liked seeing you guys squirm with having to spell on the spot. Oh my I, god! I would I would absolutely hate if my DM. <laughs> so that was enjoyable. I I totally got uh, taken down a peg because I actually really do pride myself on my spelling, <laughs> and I cannot sweet. believe that I missed that. Uh, 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 oh my gosh! That was that was, awesome. that was actually also a highlight, even though it was at we'll my see. own expense. <laughs> Uh, I also do want to take a moment to just remind you that we are here on Misclicks and there are tons of shows and content that you can check out. This show actually will be put on our YouTube, which is youtube.com slash misclicks. So if you want to watch it again or you didn't catch the first one or you want to share it with your friends, go to youtube.com slash misclicks. You can check it out there. Excuse me. And uh, lots of awesome stuff coming down the pipe. So don't forget to click follow on this channel and also follow Misclicks on Twitter so we can keep you updated on what we're up to. 
And I hope this won't be the last time that we have Curtis and all of these people on our sh on our uh, channel. So hopefully it's goodbye for not too long. And we will see you guys again soon. Bye. See ya. Bye. Thank you.